This chart represents the standard deviation of Antarctic sea ice. And currently, we're way over here, which seems bad. But what does this data mean, and how bad is it? In statistics, there's something called a sigma, which is another way of saying standard deviation, or how far away from normal something is. See, the standard deviation is usually shown with a bunch of data points, in this case beads, along a bell curve. This center line is the average, and the further you get from it, the further from average your data point is. So, for example, in terms of sea ice, this data point would be roughly the average, whereas this one represents a year with a lot of sea ice. It's about two standard deviations, or two sigma, away from the average. Now, because of the way standard deviation is calculated, approximately 99.7% of all data will be within three sigma of the average. So a good ice year of two sigma is still considered normal, even if it's higher than average. But anything outside three sigma gets more and more improbable to the point where it's basically impossible unless something changes the entire system. So when researchers are saying that July 2023 would be here, roughly negative six to seven sigma out, it signifies ridiculously low odds of this being caused by normal ice fluctuations, like a 0.0000000. You know what? It honestly is so low, the number doesn't exactly matter. There are a few possibilities for why this is happening. One, our current data set doesn't show the whole picture, like if ice levels suddenly plummeting is something that naturally happens every 100 or 500 years. Or two, something has changed in our climate system to make this result more likely. Something like, I don't know, the climate crisis leading to warming oceans? Right now, scientists don't know for sure. Antarctica and its sea ice are influenced by tons of different factors, both natural and human-made. Many of these aren't well understood, so it'll take more time for researchers to figure out what's leading to this year's ice loss. Luckily, we don't need to completely understand all of the nuances of what's going on to act. By using the tools we have to stop our dependence on fossil fuels and reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, we can minimize the future effects of the climate crisis.